All right. You all can see my screen. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. So um, this is just a quick 30 minute practice for conversations worth having. Um, it's based on the two practices that are in our book. And if you haven't read the book, you can get the conversation toolkit off our website, uh, which has a summary of everything in the book. <clears throat> and this is an opportunity to put into practice the two appreciative inquiry practices, generative questions and positive framing, so that we can make sure we're having conversations worth having around um, tough or challenging situations that we're in. So what we'll do is uh, people will contribute a challenge that they are working on or a thing that they're stuck on or a conversation that somebody else is having and it's not a generative conversation. And then we'll play with that um, to look at how to turn it into a positive um, frame if that's needed and then how to ask generative questions. So it's, if it's a problem that somebody types in there, um, we'll choose one of them. And the first thing we'll do is flip it so people can type into the chat, what is the flip or the positive opposite? And then how do we frame it? What's really the conversation we wanna talk about? And whoever's um, problem or situation this is, they get to choose the frame of their choice. And we'll put that into a whiteboard. And then on the whiteboard, um, everyone can join and the, the way to join is uh, when, once I bring a whiteboard up, there'll be um, options across the top. And if you click on view options, you'll get a drop down menu, click on annotate, and then you'll have another toolbar that pops up. And if you will click on format, which is a, it's a colored box. Um, you can choose whatever color font you want and also set your font um, to four, 14 or no, no bigger than 16. And then if you click on text, the T, you can type in your generative question. If you can't access chat, just type your question into the chat box and we'll grab it and bring it over. And then keep in mind that generative questions are questions that help us shift the way we're thinking. So if people are kind of focused in on a single um, solution, a generative question might broaden it. Or if people are focused in on um, something they're struggling with, a generative question might surface more information about that um, and then or, and or of it or shift to possible solutions. Um, and you'll type those on the whiteboard. So um, we'll take a couple of minutes um, to type in whatever challenges you want to in the uh, chat. If you have any, Marty has already typed one in. So I'm gonna start with that. Um, let's see, so I'll share a whiteboard. Um, And his, is, his challenge is staff is feeling a high level of fears and anxiety about returning to face-to-face -to -face teaching and learning. Um, and this is apparently with 34 kids in the class, right, Marty? That, that's correct, yep. Um, That'll happen in November, starting in November. And uh, it was just announced a week ago and staff is really struggling right now. I met with a principal last Thursday and um, uh, I said I would bring this problem to you guys to see if you could help us think about what would be the <clears throat> best way for her to facilitate a dialogue with her staff. Okay, so um, let's look at uh, what would the positive opposite be? And remember the positive opposite is pretty simple. It's just the flip. It's just the positive opposite. And so we played with this a little bit and we, we landed on the staff feels confident and safe to return to school. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so the positive opposite, the staff feels, did you say confident? 
St safe and, or confident and safe. Yep. Safe and confident to return to school. All right, so that's the positive opposite. And now um, everybody can, can play with how might you want to frame the conversation? What, what's the conversation that we, we want to be having that, will, that may result in the staff feeling safe and confident to return to school? And it may actually be that that's the conversation we want to have. Um, so type into the chat ideas that you have for a, a frame for a conversation. If staff feel safe and confident to return to school, what might be some of the outcomes? And if you'll type it in the chat box right now and we'll type questions um, let's get our frame before we start typing questions. That, so staff is feeling a high level of, oh, that's the problem. Staff are open-minded to return to school. Teachers and students are healthy and thriving when we return to school. Um, there are new approaches to stay safe and confident. All right, Marty, do any of these sound like conversation you'd like to be in. Staff collaborate on best ways to return for safe and healthy working. The school is taking all necessary measures to keep staff and students safe. We've implemented everything we need to feel safe and confident. Well, I'll be honest, the one that the principal and I identified seemed, seems too limiting, you know, we just want people to be open-minded. I like these other ones feel a little bit more open and a little bit more far reaching. Um, yeah, I don't think that's it. Well, so I almost want to take the one you had Sherry, um, but I want to um, adjust it a little bit. Great, um, let's do that. Um, teachers and students, um, are learning are are living in a healthy and thriving environment. Teachers and students are living in a healthy and thriving. Okay, great. All right, let's play with that. Can uh, I add one or question one thing? Would sure. it be thriving environment for learning? To like there to you clarify go. it. Yeah. Thriving environment for learning. All right. So what kinds of questions and many of these other um, the ideas that that have surfaced for the frame, for instance, um, Suzette's uh, frame of staff collaborate on best ways to return for safe and healthy work teaching environment might be a great question. How can we collaborate on best ways? Or how can we collaborate to return for safe? So you can go ahead and type your questions directly into the onto the whiteboard. And again, if you have a question about how to do that, there should be a menu at the very top. And on the far right, it'll say 
view options. And if you click that, you can click on annotate and then you'll have your toolbar. What new approaches can we take to create a healthy environment for learning? What resources or best practices are already in place? What does it look like and feel like when teachers and students are healthy and thriving? Great question. What are some ways that all of us could help ensure everyone feels safe? What will help you feel confident and safe? What will need to be in place for staff to feel confident? Um, mm. so are these helpful marty these are great. Okay, good. So I got one more that I wanted to, to add. Yeah. What did you just say? Learn, uh, yeah, to. The one that's being typed right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what might be capitalized on, or how might we capitalize on this to augment learning? Yeah, I was just thinking that often in, in what looks like a, a terrible situation, there's a kernel in there that is just what we need to help shift things. So something around, can we re, how do we reorganize our classrooms in ways that those kinds of questions? Yeah, it, 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 I, the reason I like that is it didn't feel like, oh, we're starting from scratch, you know, which is what you're saying also, you know, how can we reorganize rather than what, do, what do we have to do so different? Um, right. Be that we just have to adjust a little bit. Yeah. One of, the things that the, one of the things that the principal was um, saying is the staff doesn't feel very empowered right now um, because it's being done to them, they feel. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the reason she and I discussed doing uh, an appreciative inquiry approach was to try to help them feel empowered again. Yeah. Uh, what is the power that they have? So, and that's another great question. Mm -hmm. um, what what is your role in this? Mm -hmm. um, how do you want to help make it happen? Yeah, it's it it's it's potentially an opportunity to start looking at how do we innovate the way we teach in our classrooms or in our mm -hmm. school, or um, which gives it a whole different flavor. Yeah, well, and, and, and I personally, we're, we're, we're kind of back in the building. And um, I will say that the first time I came back to the building, it, it was some, a little intimidating and a little scary because we have been, uh, it's been preached at us by the media and everybody for, you know, quite a few months. Don't be around people. Right. <laughs> and, and yet once I got in the building, I realized, oh, this is okay. This is yeah. right. And that's, and that's, and so it's, that's where that empowering them to feel like, okay, I could give this a try. They might actually 
find out it's not that different. Uh, Yeah, that whole thing, if you, you remind me that it's the, the fear actually suppresses our immune system. And so the more we can flip that around, you know, yeah. 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 Great. So is, is this helpful? Oh, this is great. Thank you so Wonderful. much. Wonderful. Um, um, I was looking forward to today. I could help this principal and this is going to be really nice that I can share this with her. Great. So if you want to save this specifically, you in your toolbar, just click on save, but yep. I'll be uploading this to um, our, our blog and sending it back out to everybody. Nice. All right. Thank you, Marty. Who has another one? No, I, yeah, that, we don't have another one in there yet. So who has one they would like to share? Hi, Heather. Hi, Suzette. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hi, Kelly. Anybody have anything that they're working on that they, um, any challenges in their community? Stuck places. This is good news that everybody's <laughs> on top of all their conversations. <laughs> Any, any um, really challenging conversations that you may not be having with many people, but they are conversations we might should be having at a mm. local or a national level and how might we have those? I hear typing, but I don't see anything in the chat. <laughs> hey, Sherry, I have a question that came up in a, a workshop that I was in over the weekend, um, which which I've been thinking about too. It was a it was a, a session on uh, anti bias, anti racism work. And, and there were a number of teachers there and not a lot of school administrators. This was Montessori folk in particular. Um, and so one of the questions that came up was how can teachers encourage school administrators to address issues of, of bias and racism in their schools institutionally and in the classrooms? And that, that might be another. Okay, can, um, can you type that in the form of a, um, of a frame for a conversation as opposed to a question? And while you're doing that, I'm gonna quickly grab Heather's that she typed in. We can, let's do hers, that's fine. I'll yeah. keep thinking. Well, yeah, I, I, yours is also extremely important, so I don't want to. I don't want to let it go. Um, let's see if we can get to both of these. Um, supervisor is uncomfortable with the direction of renovation plans, and we don't have to type it. What's the positive opposite? Anybody? Positive opposite of supervisors uncomfortable with the direction of renovation plans. Supervisors are comfortable. Right, their supervisor is comfortable with the direction of re reservation renovation plans. What's the positive frame? What if if the supervisor is comfortable with the direction of the renovation plans? What are some of the outcomes? Or what is the outcome that we're hoping for? 
Heather, this is yours. So if you want to provide any additional like information around it. Sure. Um, we have uh, our library is undergoing some renovation plans and um, different department supervisors are all a part of this. And we're coming from a place where we've been changing the collection drastically. So um, some departments are losing space because circulation trends, etc. Um, and this particular department is getting a little bit smaller of an area. And I think they're having a really hard time with kind of that shift in libraries overall, mm -hmm. um, especially when it's easy to get excited about some other departments just naturally. So anyway, we've been talking, but it kind of keeps coming back to uh, the same space. And she's a supervisor, so I need her showcasing like this leadership and this confidence in the process. Ooh, I like inspires. Here we have the new layout of the library will meet the multifaceted needs of all departments. Um, the supervisor is comfortable and inspires other staff in embracing the renovation. A renovation boosts our morale and helps us thrive. What is the outcome of your renovation? What are you, are you renovating for? Supervisor and department are open to change. Um, the entire library, we're just outdated. So um, ah, updating okay. uh, works throughout. Do any of these or any pieces of these? Um, yes, four of them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so which, what, how would you like to frame it if you wanna pull some of these together? Um, at first I really like Sue's about she's comfortable and inspiring um, about embracing the renovation, but Lauren's, it'll meet multifaceted needs. That's great. Um, so is Charlie's. You know what, Suzette, you just hit the nail on the head. That's why we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, so let's go with that one. <laughs> and if you wanted, you could get Inspires in, in there. The updated library inspires us to better serve the greater community. All right, so what are some questions? That you could ask. There is there opportunity still for input on the renovations? Yes. Okay. Very much so. <clears throat> I 
I can move that. These are so good. I love watching people come up with these generative questions because it's so cool how everybody's mind works just a little differently. Like everybody has that different vantage point. Yeah, it, it, it is such the beauty of collaborating on this stuff. And sometimes it's a little tweak to a question that makes all the difference in the world. Any of these in particular? Um, uh, you think would support? Um, I love that answer? one. Yeah, um, about a couple years from now, uh, what's been a great implementation? I think focusing on that forward thinking. Um, how can your department help contribute to better serve the greater community? Ooh, what's this one? Oh, how will the updated library benefit you and your department? So bringing her into it with the benefits too. Yeah, the feedback of the, if you were comfortable with renovations, what would be happening? That's, that's the discussion we've been having, but I have not phrased it that way. You guys are awesome. <laughs> uh, we have we have like a two minutes. Um, Charlie, did you come up with it all? A, um, I'll save this for you, Heather. Thank you. Um, did you come up with a frame? And we can see if there are some ideas and questions for how to host that conversation. Well, it's it's probably something like this. School administrators are unwilling to address bias and racism. They've all got a lot on their plates. COVID, you know, all the things Martin was talking, Marty was talking about. Um, this is one more thing, right? But it's a very important thing. Um. So what if it's something like that, that school administrators realize that addressing bias and racism will make the whole school better? And so you're having a conversation around how this makes the school better, the classrooms better, everyone more successful and their life easier instead of harder. That would be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> right. So then, right. What are the, what are the questions that help us get there? Right. How can we. Yeah. So let's take one minute. And if everybody wants to like put in some questions in there um, that could be asked to help start a conversation around how equity supports the best schools. That's nice. Um, Races equity. Uh huh. That's nice, what ways? Yeah, looking for positive deviance. Who in the school is already doing that? Uh -huh. um,
I love the idea of feedback from teachers and students. That's really wonderful. realizing where we've run over. I don't want to take up people more time than people um, have planned for. Um, so thank you everybody for your participation in this. I hope this is helpful, Charlie. It is. Thank okay. you all. I Wonderful. do appreciate it. I'm sorry to run over too, but thank you. Oh, no problem at all. It was a great to see everybody and to see some new people. Um, and we'll be back next week. Um, and Jackie will be here then. All right. It was a pleasure. Thank you.